If the final design looks like that, I will kill the design team and throw myself off of a building. Those were the words of Lee Xiang, founder and CEO of Lee Auto, when he saw this rendering that claimed to show the Mega MPV, their upcoming electric MPV. Well, the final design is out and, uh, good news is he's still alive. Guess he lives on the ground floor. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Since filming our review, Li Auto announced that the official price for the Mega will be about 78,000 US dollars, and there will be only one trim available at launch. That means everything you're about to see is standard, apart from some optional exterior colors. Do you want to purchase an interesting Chinese vehicle like this? Reach out to us via email at sales at wheelsboy.cn. We can connect you with a reliable exporter of Chinese cars. Li Auto has been outperforming its more established rivals like Neo and Xpeng on the sales charts, and it's done so by selling hybrids, not pure EVs. That changes with the introduction of the all-electric Mega. This bullet-headed MPV signals a big shift in their strategy and does so with a design that is slipperier than a used car salesman. Its drag coefficient of 0.215 isn't just lower than any other MPV. It's lower than almost any other production vehicle on Earth, including the Porsche Taycan and the Tesla Model 3. It must be acknowledged that this style of MPV isn't entirely new. There's the current Hyundai Staria, and even the Pontiac Transport from the 1990s, but none of those designs are quite so dystopian. Li Auto pitches the Mega as a high-speed train for the whole family, complete with images of happy children playing in the sunlight. When in reality, it looks like what Robocop used to pick up his children from soccer practice. The profile of the Mega is very simple. You could draw it with just three lines, and yet there are exactly zero angles from which this looks like a normal MPV. Here on the front, it looks like a robot that's preparing to eliminate you. On the side, it looks like a troop carrier for space marines. If you somehow manage to evade the robot here on the front end, the one in the back, the angrier, redder one, it's going to finish the job. You can get your Mega painted in any color you want, as long as what you want is a shade of white, black, or gray. The wheels will also only be offered in dark colors, but there's a good reason for that. They're 18 inches, and by painting them dark colors, they're able to visually meld with the tires, making them look a little more proportionate on this very big vehicle. See what I mean? Terminator-like. I don't know why, but I thought the Mega logo would be bigger. Before we jump inside, let's talk about the EV of it all. You see, while Lee Auto is a few years behind its rivals when it comes to producing pure electric vehicles, it's hard to tell from the specs on the Mega. Between the 3.3 meter wheelbase is a 103 kilowatt hour ternary lithium battery pack with a claimed CLTC range of 710 kilometers. The charging architecture is 800 volts with a peak charging capacity of 552 kilowatts. According to Lee Auto, on one of their superchargers, this thing can charge 500 kilometers of range in just 12 minutes. With temperatures outside around 20 degrees Celsius, I saw the Mega charge 516 kilometers of range in 14 minutes. Other media were able to charge 500 kilometers in under 11 minutes, so the claim of 12 minutes seems achievable, just not every time you charge. It's also important to keep in mind that, just like supercharging stations from other brands, you can't achieve those speeds if someone else is using one of the other charging stations at the same time. The juice from that battery pack goes to a dual motor powertrain making 400 kilowatts and 552 newton meters of torque. Its hefty curb weight of 2,785 kg makes it heavier than a Cadillac Escalade ESV, but it still manages to get to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.5 seconds. Despite its dystopian exterior styling, the interior of the Mega is actually a remarkably airy and light place to spend time. It's also a copy-paste of their SUVs, particularly the L9 flagship SUV. That includes dual 15.7-inch OLED screens, a 5-inch touchscreen over the steering wheel here, and a 13-inch head-up display with one of my personal favorite designs in the car industry. 
Special for the Mega, however, is this, a digital rear view mirror because, well, without it, uh, you wouldn't be able to see anything. All of this is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8295 processor. You've also got dual SIM cards from two different service providers to make sure you have data as much as possible. You also get dual 50 watt wireless charging pads. But what Lee Auto is really known for is creating very family friendly interiors, particularly when it comes to rear passengers. And since the Mega has given them a much larger canvas upon which to paint, let's see what they've come up with. Feature-wise, that means more of that good L9 flavor. Here between the seats, you've got a storage cubby that can be cooled from zero to seven degrees Celsius or heated from 35 to 50 degrees. For my fellow Americans watching, that means as little as 32 degrees Fahrenheit or as high as 122 degrees. The button for opening and closing the rear doors is uh, a little crude, I'm gonna be honest, but at least it's clear and easy to use, just like that. The Nappa leather seats in this vehicle for the first and second row are all heated and ventilated. They also have 16 point massage, which means you're not just getting massaged on your back, you're also getting massaged on the bottom as well. As in the Li Auto L9, the second row seats also vibrate along with the media on the 17 inch rear entertainment screen and 21 speaker surround sound system with Dolby Atmos. Like other Li Auto models, there is no remote control for the second row screen. Instead, you control it via hand gestures like this. It's nice not to have to worry about losing the remote, but it does take some getting used to. On the rear of the center console, there's also two 60 watt charging ports, but each seat has their own wireless charging pad right there. Remember when I said these seats were heated? Well, I didn't just mean the seat bottoms and the seat backs. I also meant the leg rests and the armrests. What it's missing is zero gravity seats here in the second row, which are available in some of its competitors. Sitting in the second row, however, what really struck me was the sheer amount of space. The leg room here is as big as a BMW i7, but what's more impressive is if I climb into the third row, third row legroom is larger than that of a BMW 5 Series long wheelbase. Third row seats are heated and have their own USB charging port. They also have adjustable rake, as you can see here. Just as important for rear passenger comfort is the fact that the floor height of the Mega is consistent between the second and third row. That means that third row passengers won't have crippling back pain from eating their knees after a long ride. I'm five foot nine inches or about 1.75 meters tall, and I also have a pretty decent amount of headroom back here. With big sedan levels of legroom in all three rows, how much space is there left for cargo? The official number is 1,054 liters. That in practical terms means four 28 inch suitcases plus two 20 inch suitcases. That's more than the 755 liters of the Xpeng X9, but I think it's gonna be a different story when it comes to maximum cargo space. As you can see, unlike the Xpeng X9, which folds its seats into the floor itself, the Mega folds them up and forward. Now, Lee Auto says that having a big hole in the floor would compromise its crash structure, but either way, I think that the Mega loses this space war, even with the addition of this generously sized rear cargo area. <laughs> The Mega is a massive vehicle, measuring 5.35 meters or 210 inches in length. It is therefore not what I would describe as particularly maneuverable. When driving it in dense urban environments or tight parking lot conditions, I think it's more akin to driving a cruise ship than a land going automobile. Thankfully, you are aided in this endeavor by a whole bunch of glass, meaning good visibility all around. Well, except for the back, actually. But anyways, you also have a ton of cameras that give you a commanding 360 degree view on command. These do a great deal to alleviate the issues associated with driving such a large vehicle, but there's no amount of cameras that can decrease the turning radius of a vehicle. Do you know what could? Rear steer. Lee Auto chose not to include rear steer in the Mega. 
Why they did that, I'm sure there are many reasons that they could tell me, including packaging issues, wanted to have more space in the back, but the result is the same either way. This thing does not have the same maneuverability, the same nimble nature as the Xpeng X9 with its standard rear steer. That's particularly true in tight urban situations, as I described, or in parking lots where you need to make tight turns. So you don't get rear steer, but you do get dual chamber air suspension with adjustable height and stiffness and CDC. Now air suspension is nothing new for Lee Auto. They've had it since the L9, but that was single chamber. This dual chamber is a noticeable upgrade. The air suspension in the Lee Auto L9 could best be described as soft, but not much else. It certainly didn't feel especially premium. The Mega's ride is still soft, but not soft to the point of wallowing. Lee Auto also arranged for a brief test drive of two of what it considers to be the Mega's competitors, a Toyota Alphard HEV and a Mercedes-Benz V260 with air suspension. I would have preferred that they arrange other Chinese electric MPVs in this category, like the Zeker 009 or the Xpeng X9, but beggars can't be choosers. We drove the Mega, Mercedes, and Toyota down the same rough road, and the experience was instructive. The Toyota and Mercedes, both of which were brand new and had driven just a few thousand miles, permitted far more vibrations into the cabin. The tuning of their suspension also resulted in more head toss over changes in elevation. The Mega, meanwhile, felt much more isolated, perhaps to the point of being numb when compared to the air ride equipped Mercedes. The acceleration numbers on the Mega are attention getting, but what matters more for a family MPV is how that acceleration is achieved. If it's too sudden, you're going to have a car full of sick children. Have you ever tried to clean vomit out of a ventilated seat? I haven't, but it sounds awful. Thankfully, you're unlikely to have such issues in the Mega because the accelerator pedal is well tuned. Fast when you need it, smooth when you don't. Around town, I doubt you're going to make any children very sick. Of course, another major aspect of keeping your passengers comfortable is body control, and in that respect, the Mega does a fine job of not rolling over onto its wheels in every corner. It's still a big, heavy electric MPV, so it does roll over, but it's not enough to make everyone sick the first corner. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it has as good of body control as the Xpeng X9, and it definitely doesn't have as good of steering. The X9 definitely felt a little bit more nimble, blame that on the rear steer or blame that on the tuning of the steering i don't know but i do prefer the x9 when it comes to levels of comfort however i would say that this and the x9 are pretty much on the same level and i would consider that to be a compliment because the x9 is probably the most comfortable mpv that i've ever driven the mega takes it one step further when it comes to driver comfort by adding an airbag under the seat which specifically adjusts based on which mode you have the suspension in that's comfort or sport when it's in comfort mode it's softer more relaxed and when it's in sport mode it's firmer stiffer and that means that the seat feels a little bit more supportive the difference between the two modes is noticeable from here in the driver's seat though the claim that it will help you to feel less tired after long drives well, frankly, the only way to tell that is to have long drives in both modes, and so far I haven't had a chance to do that. Lee Auto claims that the Mega is the quietest MPV on Earth. How quiet does that mean? Well, apparently the third row, which is the loudest section of the car, is quieter than the second row of a Maybach S-Class. They accomplish this by controlling various sources of NVH. For example, they use low rolling resistance tires that are for better NVH. They use uh, specific body designs, of course, and they also use double pane glass from the windshield all the way to the third row. That includes all of the massive overhead glass. Being the careful and thorough reviewer that I am, I have taken the liberty of spending time in the second row as the vehicle is on the move, enjoying the cooled seats that are also massaging my back and bottom at the same time. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. As with pure electric powertrains, Lee Auto is playing a bit of catch up when it comes to their driver assistance systems. They've long had their own version of highway NOA or navigation on autopilot, but they've only recently released their version of city NOA. That system relies on cameras, as well as a single LiDAR unit from Huasai and myriad radars of the ultrasonic and millimeter wave variety. The whole operation is overseen by dual Orin X chips with 508 TOPS computing power. 
My favorite part of their ADOS system, however, is the bluish green lights mounted on every side of the vehicle that illuminate when the driver assistance is active, including the automatic parking system. This informs those around the car, i.e. drivers, pedestrians, bicyclists, etc., that the system is in control and perhaps to be more careful. I've used the driver assistance systems, including City and Highway NOA, from all of the major players. That includes Tesla FSD Beta, Xpeng's XNGP, and Huawei Inside. But this is my first time using Li Auto's AD Max, the latest generation. I have to say, when it comes to the actual operations, the changing lanes, the maintaining speed, the going around obstacles like um, electric scooters or three-wheeled vehicles and things like that, this vehicle is very, very smooth. There are certain areas where I think they could use a little improvement, mainly when it comes to the driver monitoring system. It does monitor your eye line, but I think that the prompts for reminding you to look at the road come a little bit longer than they should. They take a little bit longer to come, rather. So in an Xpeng XNGP, it takes around hmm, three to five seconds, perhaps, to get reminded you need to look at the road ahead. A lot can happen in three to five seconds. This system, as far as I could tell, takes more like seven seconds. That's fine, but it really should be quicker than that. It needs to be a little bit more strict. The uh, steering wheel as well, so far as I can tell out here on the highway, it very, very rarely reminds you to actually place your hands firmly on the steering wheel. I would prefer that it do so more often. Lee Auto's first full electric model might be late to class, but it definitely did its homework, covering all the major points you need for a family-friendly MPV. Yes, the exterior styling is going to be divisive, but that interior design should please people of all ages. And the electrical charging architecture, with those super fast charging speeds, might be enough to convince some people to look past the robot face and actually plop down a lot of money to buy one. Oh,